raised the question with myself and others, is it possible for the Carlsons to return to their property? From a legal perspective, I can tell you it's possible. The next question that usually is asked is, what will it take to get it done? How much money is needed? As I talk to you tonight, I can't tell you that exact amount because that certainly changes. I will comment, however, that outstanding charges to the city as we're here tonight approach $15,000. I will comment on the fact that property taxes are delinquent on the property for three years, and that's a bid in excess of $10,000. I also want to assure you from the city's perspective that when the city initiated this collection action, we did so not with the idea of any profit motive in mind. Rather, we expected nothing more than people to be responsible and pay for essential services that the city routinely provides. We live in difficult times right now. You don't have to go too far down the streets of this city to find multiple homes that have been lost by foreclosure, by tax sale, and now foreclosure of a city lien. Our statutes that regulate foreclosure, sales, and things like this have a number of safeguards. Those safeguards include notices to people of impending action warning them of things that may well happen if they don't take appropriate action. Safeguards also include extended periods of time for people to take appropriate action. <coughs> Those actions that people take, trying to gather money to pay the delinquency, perhaps refinancing, in more difficult circumstances, sale of property to try to recoup what equity they may yet have. Looking back on the events that have taken place, I can assure you that the city did nothing that would interfere with any of those safeguards. In fact, we probably instituted others that we did not necessarily have to. This process started out with the city entering into a delinquency payment agreement, which unfortunately defaulted within a short period of time. The foreclosure that followed lasted for almost exactly one year. Carlson's had the opportunity to try to seek some remedies, and they did not. Even the court ordered eviction at the tail end could well have been avoided they had taken heed of the concerns that the sheriff expressed saying that an eviction was upcoming. Safeguards warning in time did not prevent the foreclosure. It's not unusual for people in charity to know that people come to them only after it's far too late. It is a bit ironic that the media articles that have taken place over the past few days could well have averted this whole circumstance if they had run a year ago. I'm not going to blame the media for that. Our newspapers are full of foreclosures, sale notices. It's impossible for our media to report on feature stories on all of those articles. Neither should we play the bank game with the attorney that represented the Carlsons in this matter. I know that he acted in vigorous defense for them, and I am confident that he offered sound advice, which unfortunately was not followed. I know some people have attempted to blame the LaSalle County Sheriff, city officials, or city workers. It never pays to try to blame the city officials that are carrying out judicial and governmental functions. That's not the remedy. 
It is the inability or the unwillingness of property owners to address their concerns that has brought us here today. Again, I'm proud to be a member of a community that at this late hour has attempted to try to do things to help the Carlsons. And I assure you that the city will try to cooperate with those ventures as much as we're legally able. With those comments, I'm sure some of you probably have some comments you want to direct back at myself for questions. And now is a time 